So the, I don't know how easy you all find writing, especially something like a vision statement that's in theory supposed to be both succinct and comprehensive. So the, the document you have here, the first page is um, sort of arguably three versions of a succinct vision statement, none of which I find comprehensive, but they all sort of take different stabs at it. And then here, look, eyes up, don't read it yet. <laughs> boy, boy. Um, the next five pages are uh, a blush at or, or a draft of how this might, how we might present other supporting information to the board when we're when is all when all is said and done. And so I, um, you know, supporting information to the board. My rough outline of what I think we should submit includes. Uh, this top of the second page charts charts about the responses. So some of it should be really visual and easily digestible, right? Like the ability to think and reason well was the top vote getter. So that should be just really obvious. Um, but then some of those can also be sort of sub charts of, okay, for this identity group or for if you're only talking about student responses, here's what they said. Uh, again, I think both for the board and for the public, it's useful to have things that are really just evident and digestible where that's possible. Um, and then my second goal is representative free answer comments, uh, sometimes broken out by demographics per category or focus area. And so some of the rest of the, some of the other pages are, are essentially an attempt at that. Um, further back up from, hey Carmen. Yeah. Uh, further back up in the form of, um, statistics and word mentions keep past this too. Hey. Um, word mentions and sentiments so that so because we have so much free answer data including in this one I haven't cracked the code on how to extract this yet but you know even on the online survey there were there were there was an other option in a number of the menus and people would fill out sort of free answer stuff in there as well and I've got to figure out a way to get that isolated um, but so that's complicated to pull that out and, and sort of map the sentiments. However, I'm finding it really interesting to do that. So that's, um, it, you know, part of what you see in the rest of the document is an attempt at that. Um, and then breaking out major divisions. And I don't mean like, I mean, I mean areas where there is division within the community. So where there's not consensus. An example is the accountability, personal accountability and discipline. Um, narrative that we're getting, you know, we're getting, we have talked about that a bunch, but um, it's not, it's not our job to pretend that there's consensus when there is not. And so I think rather we need to notice where there is really either a broad spectrum or two camps or something like that and name those things and sort of show supporting narrative and evidence so that the board and the community can see, oh, this is what they mean um, as they, you know, use this to make decisions. So then the rest of page two is just essentially sort of top vote getters in categories of vision. What do we, what does it take to succeed and thrive? Uh, what do we think of, you know, in terms of ready for the future and then values. And then page three uh, is a first one example, one model of how to digest some of the free responses. So the first question on our survey was uh, essentially, you know, thinking back on my time in education, I wish I had, or I wish I, I could. Um, and what I did is I took three responses from two subgroups. One is students, and then another is the age group of retirees, or what I'm call calling retirees, so 76 and older. And I pulled this out partly because I thought it was fascinating because I'll confess that I had uh, at least a minor suspicion that there might be a lot of daylight between what was expressed by current students and what would be expressed by retirees. But in fact, for example, um, so the, the, the hard bullets, try new things, branch out, explore non-traditional ways of learning. Those are actual comments from respondents. And then the hollow bullets below those are me sort of summarizing the sentiment within those. So in the top two, try new things, branch out and explore non-traditional ways of learning. 
identified those as explore new explore my interests right so so sort of student choice in interests and there were six six comments that uh pointed in that direction and then simultaneously asking for varied ways of learning or learning outside of traditional ways so the interest one i think is sort of content and then the ways of learning or is more pedagogy we, we talked about that at the last meeting you know pedagogy being how you go about teaching or how you go about learning um, and then if you zoom down to the 76 plus age group i have three different quotes that lead lead off that section but again the top interest expressed from that group was essentially wishing that they'd had a chance to explore their own interests when they were in school and i so i love it that you know groups separated arguably by 60 years 60 years of life experience etc that there's convergence on some of these points um so this is this is a fair amount of work to to pull this together in this way, but I, I also think if you're a board member or if you're a community member looking for, I participate in this process, is my voice visible? I think looking at something like this would probably be very encouraging, right? Even if one of the quotes I chose, Susie, okay, I please, <laughs> I um, you, that means you can you can staff right. the computer. Right. That pink envelope is for you and your family, and that is the document that we're right. looking at. We are on page three. Welcome. Sorry to be it's glad to have you um so again even if if i participated in this process at any you know community gathering survey in any way and i i may not see my exact quote in here but if i am seeing quotes that absolutely resonate with the same sentiment that i expressed that i think that's a that's a responsibility we have to sort of demonstrate to the community that they are heard and then to make visible how we're um how what to what interest we're attributing their comments or input so that page three is one model of that as demonstrated through two really different uh demographic groups or what we might suppose to be different different demographic groups uh page four is if you you know a third of the way down is the thrive question to learn effectively and thrive in our district i think students need um and this is the, the first is just a simple chart physically and emotionally safe environment is by far you know the most people chose that and this is all respondents recorded so far and then so the sort of the top four are pretty evident the ones that are not as well represented are access to outside resources and connection to our community and then the next page page five this is the same chart or the same question as filtered for only non-college respondents. So that was basically taking out the education answer that said, I have a bachelor's degree or I have a master's degree or, or above, because we were noticing that we had a lot of, we had like early on in this, we had like 60% participation from people with master's degrees. And we thought, no, it's not necessarily representative of our community. Um, and so, uh, What's interesting here, to me at least, is that in this case, these the uh, the chart bars are in the same order. And in this case, for the population of folks who don't have a college degree, extracurricular and co-curricular activities was the second biggest vote getter and closing in on, you know, within sort of 10 or 11 points of the first one. Um, it's w worth noting that this includes current students, right, who don't have a college degree, but it also includes, you know, folks who have uh you know went to trade school or have an associate's degree or something like that um so this is an example of pretty easily digestible visual um representation of the of the data that we've got and then below that what i did with the non-college free responses to this section was i broke i i read through all those uh, tried to pull out representative statements and also tried to categorize them in way uh, into sort of this is speaking to this interest. So the the someone title is not that useful, but it but essentially it is. Um, there are many things that expressed uh, someone to believe in them, or someone who cares for them, or someone who they feel comfortable talking to. And you know that doesn't necessarily have to be a teacher, but it's clear that that's a a lot of the folks responding to this were 
wishing that that were more true. Um, and then support, you know, all the above are very important. Kids need to feel supported no matter who they, who or where they are at, in the scheme of things. So many brilliant minds are broken down by the public school system because they don't find, which I think they mean fit, into any boxes. A successful human is not necessarily a successful student and vice versa. And so that one and the next one, uh, I, can, I can be anything I put my mind to, positive reinforcement that they can be more than they dream to be and that their parents' way of living doesn't have to be the way that they live. So these two I found to be both powerful and representative of those expressions. And then there were a bunch of mentions about access. And so the, the quote on that one is, um, uh, the ability to give feedback on how their days are organized or the ability to access all kinds of help. Um, and this wasn't, in this case, I probably should add one more quote because there, was, there were comments about access that referred to participation in sports or other extracurriculars around transportation or other, other barriers. So that to me, it's interesting and useful to have concrete responses after the, you know, the chart is easy to digest. The, the concrete responses I think are more granular. And then I chose the, we have a lot of representation in the 50 to 75 age group. So I chose representative statements from that age group in response to this prompt. And in this case, I didn't, um, I didn't note how many responses were similar, but I did rank these in terms of, we heard this a lot in, in the things at the bottom were heard more than once, but not as often, right? So learning better nutrition by proper lunch hour, there were a number of references to um, healthy eating, nutrition, like that, but they weren't as much mentioned as some of these other statements. And then the top three, so the, the sort of carriage return breaks between clumps are significant, right? So the top three are sort of relating to the same thing. The next two stand alone, or they need to have their voice recognized and included. All right. So what I'm trying to, to sort of tease this out is the way we present this to the board and to the community can take all of these forms, or we can, you know, we could say, I, I hate that one, or this doesn't work for us. But I think that, especially in certain questions, some of these might be really useful, right? Like how, how many people actually said that thing? Oh, there were six people who mentioned that out of the 23 who replied. Um, all right, now I'm gonna be quiet and ask you to read the first page, which is the vision statements. Um, and I'm gonna say out loud that it's, I, as a writer and editor, I find it way easier to react to a draft than to write from whole cloth. And so I have no ego in this. Like we can draft a bunch of new ones. You can tear these apart. Any feedback is helpful.
So, any reactions? Well, I start to get, I start to like, start to be nitpicky and think about things. But then I remember too that last time we talked about like, we don't have to, like we as a group don't have to come up with a final concrete worded statement. So instead of stressing my brain out to figure out that, I feel pretty good about A and B's. Um, I sort of like the simpleness of the B's, the A, like my brain was getting tripped up. Um, but in the B's, the one thing that I feel like um, that I think is super important, important is the idea of kids being able to have choices as they pursue different paths. But I think that I think about when I was in high school, I think about kids I know that are in high school and they might have interests or ideas, but I don't necessarily know if they're, it's their passions. Passions is a pretty strong, like committed word. And I think the idea of letting kids have choices to explore things that maybe they are passionate about maybe they're not really sure about i think that's where the important flexibility is mm -hmm. so so maybe is, they is don't have to think it's their life goal they just might right. want to check it out is interest too soft um i don't think so not for me because i feel like for me, I feel like that where that that flexibility and that like allowance of kids to try things that they're interested in is what I think is important. I think B one was my favorite, especially between like the difference of B one and B two is that so minor. I mean, just like it starts out with and where, and I like the re re whack re. We recognize better. Okay. But, um, yeah. I mean, B is lacking the the part about choices, I suppose. I sort of was giving myself maximum four sentences. Mm -hmm. So there's more, and we can certainly, I mean, this is, these are intended to be sort of first blush model or drafts, and we can push them and rework them. The only thing I would say to you, Susie, is mm -hmm. I hear you that it doesn't have to be the final concrete thing. Yep. But just like you all are reacting to stuff I just wrote, mm -hmm. um, whatever we give to the board, they're likely to react to that as opposed to rewrite their own. Yep. So if <laughs> this is, if you as committee members care a lot about specific words or specific concepts, push for those because. If you don't, it's way less likely that they make the right. Make it to the thing. Yeah. yeah. Does that mean someone's here? No, okay. Probably telling you that something else is supposed to start. Yeah. It does. Yep. So that way the other one starts off. Our vision is that Montpelier Rockstar Public Schools. Yeah, that feels more like. That's why yeah. we say let's 
see where it says at Buffalo Western Public Schools, we imagine that you should, like, that sounds like it's just like a nice idea in your head. It's not like it's something you're striving to towards. Mm -hmm. is um, focusing on the time that students are also like in school whereas A starts off strong with like graduates will have when they leave. I feel like that's been kind of a persistent topic that I've noticed where people want school itself to be like whatever else is called. I'm glad you called that out. I, I was um, I was intentionally trying to write one, the A one, which is not like my first choice, just as a, this is the product that we create, right? Like once you leave the doors, that's what you are. And the, the B ones are more, it's a community of learners. It is, you know, the experience of in the time. And I, as I was writing A, I caught myself thinking a lot about the high school experience and it felt, uh, I think there was a risk that it is exclusive of elementary and middle school to some extent. Mm -hmm. So that's a, just so you know, that's some of what's in my head. I do like the wording in A where you say a spectrum of career paths though, mm -hmm. I think that. So yeah, maybe it could be something like, uh, and choices as they pursue their interests and, you know, support in a spectrum of career paths or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the same thing, but a little bit more detailed. Mm -hmm. I like A and B1 as well. I think B1 is a really responsive vision statement, especially given the student feedback we've heard about you know, like being able to kind of navigate things more flexibly and that, that idea about pursuing passions or interests, if, if we went with that word, I think is a sort of challenge to the district in a good way. Mm -hmm. Because uh, again, going back to the feedback from the students, it seems that there's not as much choice as there could be. And it's more about like, here's the template. You have a little wiggle room, but th that vision statement seems to expand that and kind of challenge the board to, to do that. So that would be my thought. A or B1, slightly into B1. I thought I should accuse myself as saying what I want to see. So I almost thought of skipping you, you know, because it's your like the topic was to discuss what you're going to present. So I didn't see it. I I'd actually, I if, especially if you feel like you have a bit of a pulse on the board. I think yeah, it's, I mean, my my thought at this point is that there's there's a few board members that are that are like lawyers, so they're really going to dive into the lawyer. Yep. So that's sort of where I see this going. Yeah. Um, I, I would like to keep some of the really good phrases and wording here, like spectrum of career paths, community of learners. Um, there are certain things that I think, you know, hopefully can, can stick. And I think they will if we provide the options to the whole board. Um, I'm just worried that it's going to nothing to have the discussion on. <laughs> As well it may. Just <laughs> if you budget the time, you won't, you won't be pissed off. <laughs> Um, so, for, I guess from my perspective, I was thinking like, even if I could visual document it, it would be fine because I'm not like talking to this third round into a student. But it is good to have some, some starting point to jump off from. So. And do you think it's useful to offer a menu like this to the board? You know, sort of three, like ABC kind of? Um, yeah, I mean, you already did them. So, you yep. know, why not? I do like your, you know, you're saying that there are statements in there that will push the board to make changes because that's the whole point 
So we want to make sure that they're specific enough and um, representative enough of the information that we got that it will push the board to understand that these are changes that people want and not just mush them into other words that we can say we're doing. My comment kind of goes along with that. Um, I like B1 a lot. I think is the difference between B1 and B2, the like we recognize yeah. and where. Um, and I think that like the we recognize is kind of like, okay, I see you, but it's not like saying we'll act on it. Like, like that seems less actionable, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, whereas B2, I think we're pretty much identical. It's like, it takes that out. Here. It's yeah. Not like a, okay, yeah, I see that over there. But like, so more declarative. Yeah, like that. that's a good okay. observation. So I want to ask another question that I, I, let's imagine, right, this process can't like, to pull back some layers, this process happened because the, the schools got extra money from Essers. And they're, they're like, okay, we need to do this. And now we have the money. We can hire somebody to do it. We can put together a process. That's the only, arguably, that's the only reason that this is happening right now. If it were a normal budget year without COVID ESSER funding, et cetera, this might not happen. And I say that out loud because it means to me that it may not happen for, let's say it doesn't happen for a decade. Could even be longer. Yeah. Board will change. Superintendent will change. Principals will change. You all will be like out of college and in the workforce and doing whatever else, right? That's a long time. So the, the, the challenge or the question for me is, do these feel durable enough? Because there's, as I like your word responsive, uh, Joe, because it is attempting to be responsive to what we've heard. Does it risk being too um, de novo, you know, of the now, and not right. I'm not sure how we would go about anticipating the something future. in the future without any data. We have the data on what's currently affecting people. It's your job, Eric, to predict the future. <laughs> I suppose. Get to it. <laughs> uh, it just seems like through our process, we have all the data from right now, and I don't see any way that we could. Really incorporate or anticipate those future things so we don't have any data. On the, on the corridor tree, one thing that you brought up that was, was lacking was, was flexibilities and processes. So I think like that should just you know, keep that in mind. It's like this isn't the Constitution. You can do it want or halfway through the year as long as you have flexibility to make that decision. Well, with the so I want to stick with that word for a second after I write it down. Accountability. Um, one of the things, one of the comments that came up in, I think it was a high school student session, was about. Um, about responsibility and it, the person made a comment about student responsibility, but also noted the responsibility of teachers and the responsibility of the district, which I loved, right? It's like, if we're in a contract, the contract is not just, the students aren't the only ones who have to like show up for their side of the contract. It's a contract that includes everyone, right? If, if, if we're asking for responsibility, um, and so, you know, in B, so in B, I've got, I use the word accountability in the last line. In A, I use the word responsibility. But in A, so I'm just gonna read that. We will value connection and relationships, a spectrum of career paths, civic engagement, choice, and responsibility. In Oxford comma, um, and generous standards, and rigorous standards in all learning. And so I chose not to name an actor, right, about who's responsible. 
you know, in your in your note about the Constitution, right? Like, it's going to be interpreted. So if we, you know, we can either name, in this case, an actor, like student's responsibility, well, then all this does is point to that, and there's, it's not pointing backwards, you know, or up, upstream. Anyway, so I just want to call out, this, that's an example of, anyway, I'm glad you like these, how about that? <laughs> well, so you just said that, and then at the end of these, I don't need to be on that, but that's extreme close up. Um, <laughs> the rigor to enable students to thrive and succeed in a changing world. That seems like it's like putting it more on faculty, like mm -hmm. to enable the students. Mm -hmm. Same with um, the beginning of both these is the community of learners. I feel like can immediately direct someone to students, especially if you aren't like thinking like everyone's always learning. Right. And, and I don't think it's bad that we're putting that on faculty to enable students to thrive and succeed. I mean, that seems like that's what we're supposed to be doing. Yeah, so um, Carmen, good point. It, the move that I did make there was community of learners as opposed to community of students or something like that. Partly the implication that um, we're all learning, you know, what if three years from now, our district is like, we need to be doing adult ed. We need to be supporting GEDs. We need to be supporting, I mean, I guess those people would instantly become students, but um, my intent was to make that a big tent. Um, but it, it's easy to, it would be easy to say community of learners and educators. Community learners is fine. I think the board, maybe if you're looking at the statement closely, are thinking more in depth about like what you might find. Again, being cautious about who we think is on the board 10 years from now. Yeah. I'm not kidding, right? I mean, I've watched the school board for 10 years and it's been populated by many, many people with many different capabilities in terms of the sort of how carefully they might read or interpret. So part of, part of the thing in my head is write this for no matter who's there. So you were just saying something that made me think, okay, um, community of learners, and then you were saying in educators, like you could add in and educators. We could also add in add, and administration defined by connection, empathy, creativity. Well, some of the stuff is student specific, I guess. Well, administrators can pursue their passions in depth. They could. They could. You could say like a learning community. Mm -hmm. I feel like that might, mm -hmm. it zooms out a little bit because teachers often yeah. describe themselves as learners as, as would admin, I think. Yeah. Anybody who works in a school, for, right? Mm -hmm. But I kind of like that idea of having like educators and administration be part of expectations too. Mm -hmm. um, just so we're, while well, we're dissecting, in A, mid, midway, uh, skills developed in learning environments that are supportive, blah, blah. So there, instead of saying schools, I said learning environments, partly as, a, again, a big tent, right? Lots of people saying learn outdoors or yeah. go to career center at Barry, you know. Yeah. The, again, just want, I just want to make clear to you all that a lot of these choices are very intentional and it's the, this is the kind of thing that I would say to Sage and Merrick at the school board meeting or meetings in August or whenever, right? It's like, this is why I chose those words. This is why we chose those words. So here's the, <laughs> so here's the trap you're in. Hopefully it's not a trap, but you know, what happens with a committee like this is like, I, I drafted this and we're, we're critiquing it, which is great. And I'll make modifications. Um, at some point, we all get tarred with the same brush, right? When we go in front of the board or when somebody gets angry at the board and the board says the committee and they go, well, who's on the committee, right? All of us are on the committee. And so at some point, you know, I probably should have said this way early on in the process. If you feel discomfort about how we're representing things in language or um, the direction, you know, how we're going about the process, you know, 
you need to speak up, not least because your name will be on it at the end. Digression, but. So I'm just going to read C because it was my apocalyptic one. <laughs> At MRPS, we imagine that each student is equipped with core skills and characteristics to reach their potential and is challenged to experiment and didn't, wasn't sure what to say next in preparation for an uncertain future where they create community and improve their world despite tremendous challenges. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> we'll all be underwater soon. And we need people to know how to build boats. Yeah. Um, anyway, I was kind of having a little bit of fun. It's good as a distraction, like the ones are better. <laughs> yeah, it's I easier mean, to narrow it's down. It's a good sales strategy. You could have that one, but <laughs> <laughs> so I obviously a little tongue in cheek, but I was conscious of that when I was writing it, and it is again like what I, what what do we say in the the early one? Um, changing world. In the second one, we say in B, we say changing world, and then. In C, I say uncertain future, right? Uncertain sounds quite scary, I think. Anyway, I'll shut up. So we're going to, sorry, because I missed the beginning. Yeah, that's okay. So we're going to give something like this to the board. Yep. And then we're going to give something like all of this that's or exactly all of this plus. <laughs> Not exactly all of this. Okay. Something like all this. Okay. So that's my next, that's what I was just going to move on to. Nice segue. You're welcome. I Thank you. <laughs> um, <clears throat> what I said earlier on is basically the, the rest of the document is my swing at what if it takes the shape? Yeah. You know, it's a lot. It's a lot of granularity. Um, I think if you go to page four and five, where the lead is two, two charts that try to articulate a little bit of distance between the general population and this specific group that's non-college background mm -hmm. as a easily digestible. My, my intent with any section that we present is that we would open with easy visual stuff, then get to- I like charts. Some, yeah, something a little bit uh, a little bit more granular and then a lot more granular with the idea that we can either roll up things into just an executive summary that's mostly charts and a few quotes and then if you're you know joe or sagey and you just love to geek out and you can you can read the 30 page one or whatever um but this is where i I'm, this is a gut check right not only do i do things a, a few different ways in this draft you know, is this resonating with you all, especially now that you've spent some time with the, some of the input? Take your time. I mean, just from quickly looking at stuff and hearing stuff, it, it seems like, I mean, there's so much to organize and to like distilled down. So I, I mean, I think that the way this is going seems good to me. Our survey results, we are focusing on the anomalies by having the results and trying to trying to highlight those and then just present the entire data as something that we can operate for now. So really highlight the answers that shocked us and just kind of get into that chart. So focus on anomalies and what? Um the very interesting results, unexpected results. Um, sure. okay. And there were some where, where we thought, hey, like, we're great in this area. Got it. I think that's awesome because you don't, maybe that's like not the majority of what you hear, but it doesn't make it any less important. Also, maybe it would be useful to also eventually link the demographics as being clearly like it's been five years as a so let's talk about that a little bit more in here i just gave a few examples right like in the charts i pulled out the non-college 
in the two answers to, uh, you know, in my experience of education, I wish I had, I pulled out student versus uh, 76 plus. <clears throat> you know, we have some other, like BIPOC identifying respondents, we have it's really slim data, partly because a lot of the responses we got from BIPOC folks were, you know, sort of one off, like one pagers as opposed to the full survey. Um, so that's a weakness that I'm not super happy about, but it, if it were stronger, that's an obvious group to me to pull out. I haven't pulled out the LGBTQ, for example, you know, I'm thinking about sort of really evident marginalized groups who are, you know, as, as narrated often under, underrepresented or feel, you know, there's a, there's a comment I didn't put in that says something to the effect of the school, the, the education system is awful, especially for BIPOC students, everybody needs to do better. You know, that's a that's a strong statement and I'll find a place to make that visible. Um, so anyway, my question is, are there specific sort of subgroups that we want to call out? And it could, you know, like the sort of non-college one is one that's of personal interest to me and I think is relevant from some of the discussions we've had. What other, you know, like Nathan, don't forget this one. I just was thinking about how, say, someone might not identify themselves as BIPOC, but the people that they love and care about that they're responding to. So skipping, you know, a white female yeah. who has important things to say. Right. So I just was thinking about how that, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. So can, I mean, are you okay to put yeah. yourself in the mix there? Yeah, I think I just did. <laughs> yeah, so I, I've been careful not to like try to out anybody as any way that they don't want it. So Susie's a parent of a student of color and one of, I think what must be a response of yours. No, I think you, you said it in a community gathering. I think you said, you know, my daughter doesn't like to be singled out to be part of like committees because of her race. Yeah. Which I thought was a you know, like valuable um, piece of information, and I think we have there, there are a lot of folks in this community. Whether you're like, maybe you're a parent of a of a transgender student, maybe you're a parent exactly. of, a, of a BIPOC student, and so your alertness to all these all these challenges is way higher. Yeah. But as you respond to this, your identity yeah. it doesn't come through, and I that's a probably a miss on my part to not say. Like, I am not this, but I, you know, I, I, it's hard. yeah, how do you even, how would you right. do that? Next time. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but your puzzle is a good puzzle, right? That is true. Therefore, let us be careful not to make, let us be careful not to make the assumptions that white folks don't have relevant observations about. Yeah. BIPOC lived experience, right? No population is monolithic, for example. Yeah. And is that something that we're actually, I don't know if that's something we're actually dive into or if we can have steps because we know we want to If someone says they don't want to, sorry, they don't want to. Right. Yeah, sorry. Right. <laughs> um, and so it's, I, I feel like it's sort of what I was thinking that's, that's going to happen. So I'm not. I, I personally wouldn't really look into the information on that. So this is a good point because like, another board member mentioned to me that in just a casual conversation that uh, most BIPOC people in Vermont have a population partner. So then you should double every comment from that person. You know, yeah. Have someone else who doesn't identify that yeah. has the same concerns for her. Yep. Um, so that's interesting. I think about it that way. Yep. Now I, Although me and my partner have some very different ideas, but we do have some, for sure, overlap. Whatever we end up with is going to be better than existing. Not that it's horrible, but it's This is slightly different, but I mean, it's probably something that we would have had to have done at the beginning of this process. But I wonder what values that we heard from, or what values we didn't hear from the community 
or maybe not as we didn't hear as much that we would have expected to have been more important to the community. Mm. Right. If we had done some predictive thing, and then we and then it was different. Yep. That's a good question. What do we expect versus what we actually saw? Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, anecdotally, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure I would have identified how strong the like college path culture is, and how much resist or um, dissension from that there is, not just in students but adults as well. Like that's not the only path. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I like your question. Oh, you're looking at me. I'm thought you might have something to say. <laughs> okay. So the durable. So I'm just. I'm going to come back to the, to that. It's, all right. No, I'm going to do. Stick with the current question. Of the model that you've got in your hands. If you are a school board member, or if you are as American say GR, is this going to feel too much? Is it going to feel, thank goodness, it's all there. I can read it, and I'm at least read it once. Or when I get, you know, so I'm thinking about how this is going to be, how this might be utilized if I'm a school board member or I'm Libby. Uh, I'm being questioned by a member of the community about my student's experience and why we're making the choices we're making. I think school board members and administration want to be able to say this is why. And I think it's useful to flip it the other way. If I'm a community member who is suddenly feeling disempowered and wants to be forceful about my complaint or my assertion, right? Is like, I've seen this document. I read this document. It said these things. I don't see that expressed in your practices. Right. I mean, I've said some of that stuff before, but I think to me, those are two of the important tests of what we produce is, are they use like a contract? Like it should be useful to everybody, all the stakeholders. It's, it's interesting. I think, you know, I know some people, a couple of board members will want all the members that want to read the personal comment. A couple of you know, will just answer the other and just be more into the actual conversation. So it, it will be good if we have time to digest this before you come to, to meet with us. Yep. That way, you know, pretty much all the weeks. Yep. Um, but no, I, I think, you know, anything that's this large of a scope, I think it's helpful to have. But then, obviously, for transparency and just for curiosity, send us a link or have someone that can help me. I need to have printouts for everybody else. So yeah. Yep. Um, the climate survey that the board sent to faculty. Yep. Are there findings in that that are relevant to this process? Largely, it's about facilities, such as on academics. It's more about see more about issues that the staff wants to contribute. I mean, honestly, it'll be a relief if there's not information that's relevant to this. Like, okay, I don't need to look at that. I mean, I don't know if you would share that with me anyway, but. There's probably a little bit just because it's the same topics. Yeah. I don't think there's anything that's directly. There's no huge area. Okay. Um, Housekeeping stuff tomorrow evening is the last community engage, community gathering at Union Elementary. Um, my somewhat reliable 
childcare people have bailed on me. So if any of you all know folks who would like to earn 30 or 40 bucks looking after rugrats running around that playground, um, that'd be great. 5.45 to 7.45 is two hours. I do 30 bucks, but I could negotiate. And in the desperate. past, it has been not very many rugrats. Right. That's so right. if that is helpful. And there are snacks. Yeah. Yeah. So we know. I'll just say, you know, throw down the gauntlet. Amira in Roxbury, like came up with two people. Boom. First time around and second time around. So <laughs> if you think of yourselves as executive recruiters for part-time childcare, please step up. I love it. <laughs> On it. Um, how many or what is that? Two, two would be good. I, if we have good turnout. I mean, I have a I have a survey that people can respond to saying that they're coming and they need, you know, they have 18 kids and they're these ages and plus they need a translator, but and where you might be <laughs> that's a good point <laughs> i don't have kids your age your kid's age so you're safe with me um yeah so you know it's very try to be prepared in case people show up it's fun and um where is it in place you you know the cheaper then. and then the roxbury one wednesday night is 5 30 to 7 30 and there will be a cookout so it'll be Aww. I know. See, it, you know, you know, Montpelier people got to come down to Roxbury, mm -hmm. check it out. Pretty cool. She's <laughs> <laughs> like, that's oh, funny. Yeah. Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing it. <laughs> I will be driving down to Roxbury. Anybody would like a ride. I promise to make good conversation. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll be leaving here at 4.30 to get there at five and set up and so it's a commitment. I go off to bring my kids. We have childcare. Amira has arranged childcare. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. All right. Um, anybody here, Meg, or anybody else who hasn't filled out a W9 and would like to get their stipends for being part of this process? You've gotten your check? Yes. Elliot, you got? OK, and we're not done. Obviously, you've just been to more meetings. Yeah? No. All right, do you want to get paid? Sure. Right. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it ends up adding up to a bit. Yeah. So, yeah. so find a W9 online or in my old email or ping me, and I'll send you one. OK. Super easy. Thanks. All right, you're ineligible, you're ineligible, and you're ineligible. Sorry. OK. <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> um, that's all I've got for tonight. I'm, I'm actually, I'm encouraged that you responded the way you did to the vision statements. Thank you. Um, and I'm also not hearing any friction with the structure, proposed structure of the presentation. Okay. Uh, it's been, from my perspective, been really terrific working with you all showing up really good thoughts and comments uh i'm excited about i mean i don't know how much you've read through the comp the, you know people's contributions but i find it riveting so i hope you've enjoyed it will you let us know when the school board meeting is that way we can be there or listen or something yeah so the cg or ret indicated last time that they were hoping for a report august 3rd mm -hmm. I'm planning, as I mentioned last time, to not be in the country August 3rd. So I'm hoping to maybe bump that meeting to the 10th, but I know I'm just one and the school board is many. So I'm trying to get a conversation with Jim. I don't know, will you be on the board still at that point? All right. Um, I don't want to do this by Zoom. Yeah. And uh, so it's either the thir third and the 17th. The 17th would be getting into, all right, they've got the presentation and now the board is wrestling with what do we do with it mm -hmm. and me supporting them in theory although they may choose to do other business that meeting um so i'm hoping that it'll be the 10th and the 17th and then i will work with the board further but that's not something you're obliged to do all right any uh responses 
on some notes. <laughs> <laughs> those are those are responses that counts. All right. Yeah, if you show up at five forty-five, you help me set out the like crackers, and then people show up at six. And awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, oh, I think I, I could do it. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm just <laughs> <No>. kidding. <laughs> so that so the the trick though, Elliot, is if you can make that time slot, I would much rather have you participate and sort of be a listener. Um, so I only in sheer desperation. I'll be there. Okay. Oh, great. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Thank you.